All right, let's talk about the Raspberry Pi Zero, Zero, the Zero, the Zero with the camera, and the Zero, the ten thousand Zero with the uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Okay, so what's the difference between um, having the built-in Wi-Fi Bluetooth versus the Zero, the five dollars Zeros with a camera, with or without the camera, and and a uh, USB dongle like this with the uh, EDI Max, uh, the tiny, very very tiny EDI Max for Wi-Fi. So, um, is it worth paying an extra five dollars, double the price, five dollars or ten dollars? Is it worth paying the extra for the built-in Wi-Fi Bluetooth? I say yes because uh, several reasons. Okay. Now, I mean, you can you can go for the five dollar one if uh, if you don't need uh, wireless or if only occasionally need wireless. But um, of course, obviously, uh, a, any USB connected device is going to use more power. So it'll use more power. It'll use uh, it'll, it'll uh, produce more heat. Uh, this little guy produces a lot of heat. If you even even touch it, it's like it'll, it'll hurt your hand. Um, support um, since it's a third-party dongle, you know, there's less support. Sometimes it disconnects for uh, unknown reason, uh, or it may not work. Depending on your dongle, some dongles may not work. Some will disconnect. Even this one that's uh, common uh, with uh, Raspberry Pi users, and I use it a lot. It still occasionally disconnects for strange reasons. Uh, the built-in Wi-Fi that is the same as the one in the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 um, so far hadn't had any uh, issues with it okay, and it also won't, runs uh, with very little heat because I, I touched the uh, chip there the that guy this uh, built-in chip here or any other part um, well that's, that's the Bluetooth um, Ethernet uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and uh, it, it's barely even warm. You can you can't even detect any heat in it. Of course, it runs a little bit warm, but um, you put your hand in there, you won't be able to feel any heat. Versus if you touch the CPU, it's it's uh, fairly warm. Um, and of course, this this is built in. They have to support it, so you shouldn't have any issues with it. It should be supported. Uh, there's no LEDs. That might be an, uh, a point to having an external. Is you got these little LEDs that tell you it's connected or activity or whatever. If there's a reason why you need a LEDs, where where's the built-in one? Even on the um, Raspberry Pi three, it doesn't have an LED indicating whether you've got a connection or or any activity in there. Which I guess you could write your own software for that. Uh, so it's LED, and um, of course it's built in, so you cannot change it or upgrade it and if it breaks which I don't think it'll break but if it fries for whatever reason you, obviously you cannot replace it so you have to throw away the whole thing and as for power uses let's check out how much power it uses so I'm gonna just swap out the SD card and so that uh, the only thing that will change is the Raspberry Pi Zero W with the camera and without the camera, the five dollar versions versus the uh, ten dollar branch that I'm going to uh, swap out. So we'll see how much power it uses. And what I did was uh, I rigged up a USB cable, the USB uh, extender, and um, what I did was splice it and put a little um, terminal here, a screw terminal here, and. Uh, Port. This guy here. Right, so um, yeah, we'll just boot it up. So we'll start by booting up this guy here, the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W. Okay, just hold on a second. Right, let's just watch the meter while it boots up. And we just move this a little bit out of the way and just watch the meter as it boots up. See, it uses like 60 milliamps, 120 
Little amps and still booting up. No monitor because I don't want to uh, have any uh, variables on there. Any unknowns. So with the minimum, just the SD card and absolutely nothing else. And as it settles down, it's about 110 milliamps, uh, 110 uh, milliamps, and it seems to level out at that. And I'm just going to connect to it from a remote machine and see, uh, see how it works out. And it jumped a little bit. Jumps a little bit as I use it. So if I just use a, I guess a, maybe a ping flood, my router. So if I just do a ping flood on my router, if I see, so, so it's uh, 100, 110 milliamps right now. So if I do a ping flood, it jumps up a bit. If I stop. goes back down. So let me swap out, uh, I'll just shut it down and swap out. So we'll, we'll, we'll watch the shutdown also. And uh, push enter. It moves up and down a little bit. And at off state, it uh, still uses like 40 milliamps, 30 milliamps, 30 30 to 40 milliamps at off state. Just off, and the CPU is lukewarm, lower than body temperature. Okay, so let's try the uh, next one here. So I got the $5 Raspberry Pi with a camera connection to the 1.3 version, and uh, we'll just watch it boot up here. I'll flip on the power and So it uses quite a bit of power. So the West Raspberry Pi 1.3 with a camera connection and a USB Wi-Fi dongle, the EDI Max dongle. As you can see, it's starting to connect, and it uses quite a bit of power. We'll just see. We'll just wait for it to settle down. Yeah, it's still. I mean, it's not a tremendous amount of power more, but it is more power. Uh, if you're running off a of battery, then that will count. Although it's not tremendously heavy. Battery heavy. So a little bit. So the W has, when it settles down, uses. Um, 110 milliamps. This one with the adapter, the USB adapter, sells down at. It still hasn't stopped, but it's it's about 130 milliamps to 160 milliamps. But so far, it seems to be selling down at 130 milliamps. Might be doing something. But uh, I'll just connect to it now. It should be the same IP. And okay, looks like it's not doing anything. Okay, so yeah, so when activated, it uses quite a bit of energy. So I'm just push, pushing enter a bunch of times and it's using 200 milliamps. And if I do a ping flood, uh, so if I do a ping flood at, at the uh, router, the local router, not, not, not internet, not crossing the internet. So it goes from 130 milliamps to 240.
about 230 to 240 milliamps. Okay, so it uses significantly more if it's uh, if you're running off a battery that might be an issue. Well, not really, but it's not not terribly so. But it does heat up quite a bit. It heats up your hand quite a bit. It may or may not be a deal breaker for you, but um, oh, I got to do the shutdown and then I'm going to swap out the original Pi. So we'll let it settle down and do a shutdown. Okay, I'm already disconnected, so there's no activity. Alright, so um, shuts down at about the same power. So I'm going to swap out the original. $5 Raspberry Pi is zero without the camera, without the wireless. I'll also note that uh, everything stays on, the USB stays on when you turn it off. So you, you need to physically disconnect, otherwise it'll continue to drain. Right, and finally, finally let's uh, watch the original Pi Zero boot up. Flip on the power, and we'll watch the original Pi Zero boot up. Okay, you get the activity light here, which you can barely see. Yeah, and the uh, Ethernet is, USB Ethernet dongle is activated. And we'll just watch and wait for it to settle down. Okay, so the zero original five thousand zero with the Ethernet with the uh, Wi-Fi dongle connected and settled down seems to use about the same amount of energy as the one with the camera adapter. So if you can buy the five dollar one, buy the one with the camera adapter because it uses the same amount of power. Alright, so let's see, um, let's see what happens when we do a uh, hook connector it. And as we connect to it, it jumps up a bit. Okay, as I'm typing, so I'm just pushing into, push, oh, hold on a second, let it settle down. Uh, so it settles down at about the same 130 milliamps as the camera one, and if I'm just pushing a bunch of, pushing enter a bunch of times. Okay, yeah, so let's do a ping flood. So I'm gonna do a ping flood of the router. Let it settle down. Okay. So the ping flood is about the same, 230 milliamps. Right, so about the same, really. 30 milliamps, maybe. Okay, and we'll do a shutdown again and watch it go down. Okay, we're already disconnected from the SSH. Alright, it's still, activity light is still flickering and then it just stopped. And it stops at, at 30 milliamps just like the other ones. CPU is lukewarm. Okay, so the off state also is the same. So all three of them looks the same. Off state. Alright, so um, there you have it. The W by itself with by itself with no connections except power and its built-in Wi-Fi activated uses 110 milliamps versus uh, I think what it is is uh, the 
the uh, USB controller interface on the dongle is using the slight, slightly more power. It's one that's draining, putting the slight load on the device that's giving it the extra 20 milliamps. You got the, you know, if you think of a block diagram, you have this guy here. It's got uh, a USB interface module, and then it's got the Wi Fi module. If you think of a block diagram, think of it in terms of a block diagram. So the USB part might use 20 milliamps, which isn't terrible, which is, you know, not, not, not bad at all. Um, but if you're running a zero off a of battery, then obviously that's gonna be an issue. So if you're just trying to minimize uh, power usage. Okay, so the two branches, the $10 branch versus the $5 branch uh, connected to Wi-Fi is the $10 branch uses 110 milliamps when settled down and the other branch, the $5 branch, uses 130 milliamps settled when settled when the activities die down. Uh, activity, when I did a ping flood, 160 milliamps on the $10 branch and 240 milliamps on the $5 branch. So those are the compromises. Alright, um, otherwise there isn't any other noticeable differences except uh, on the power system here there's a little coil there there's a little choke coil there and it's the same one uh, found on the Raspberry Pi 3 so I don't know what that does I guess it's just, it's just a power conditioner Probably just to remove uh, interference. It's not present in the other ones, so I'm not sure why it's not needed in the other ones. Probably because Wi-Fi, it may, you know, noise from your USB might interfere with the Wi-Fi activity. Maybe that's why they need the filter there. Control coil to remove the 60 hertz or any kind of noise that's already there. Alright, thanks for watching, and have a good day.